What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a database with Flask and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at setting up a database for Flask. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, it is time to start talking about databases, and this is going to take us a few videos because there's a whole lot of stuff to learn, but in this video, we're going to set up the database, we're going to set up a form that we can add things to it, you can see. We can fill out the form, click the button, it says submitted. Okay, when we go back, we see Tim Smith is down here, and it's very cool. Now we're going to use something called SQL Alchemy, which is sort of a wrapper that goes around and allows you to use any database that you want. So we can use SQLite, we can use MySQL, we can use Postgres, and we're going to learn how to use all of those. We're going to start with SQLite because it's the easiest, and we'll use that just to set things up. And then we could swap out for MySQL or Postgres or whatever we want to do, and I'll show you how to do that. So. The first thing we need to do is install SQL Alchemy. So let's head over to our terminal here. And if your server is running, hit Control C to break out of there. And we just want to pip install flask SQL Alchemy. Okay, so it's installing it. And we can pip freeze to make sure that it's in there. We see sure enough SQL Alchemy. If this version changes by the time you watch this, no big deal. Now this is also installed some other things as well, SQL Alchemy, and some other things that were already required, may have been installed or may not, depending on what's already in there. But okay, we're good to go now. So we can flask run this guy to make sure our server is running again. Okay, so we've installed this. Now we need to import it. So let's head over to our hello.py file, our main flask app form. And let's go from flask underscore SQL Alchemy. Me, and I always misspell this A L C H E M Y. All right, we want to import SQL Alchemy. Now, notice the capitalization S Q L and A all capitalized. Uh, everything's lowercase here. And notice this is Flask underscore Alchemy. Back here, when we pip installed this, we pip installed, let's see, Flask dash, not underscore. That's normal, just sort of take note of that. So, Okay, we've got this now. And while we're at it, let's import from date time, let's import date time. Because when we add things to the database, we want to keep track of when they were added. So we need date time for that. So we'll just go ahead and import it now. Okay, so we've got this. Now, the first thing we need to do once we've imported this and installed it is sort of add it to our app here, add database. So to do that, we just go app.config and square brackets. And inside of here, it's SQL Alchemy underscore database underscore URI. And this is a uniform resource indicator, sort of like a URL that points to where our database is. And like I said, we're just going to use SQLite, which comes with Python right now. In the future, we'll change this to MySQL or PostgreSQL. And when we do, we'll change this URI to point to whatever other database we want to use. But for now, we just want to use SQLite. And to do that, we just go SQLite colon forward slash forward slash forward slash, and then let's name a database. And I'm gonna call it users.db. So call this anything you want, but right now we're gonna create a table that has users. So, you know, if we look back here, you see we could put a name and an email address. This is gonna be a user list. Eventually we'll turn this into people that can log into the website and stuff. But for now, we just wanna keep track of their names and their email addresses just to get the ball rolling and learn how to use databases with this thing. So, uh, okay, let's create a database called users.db. So we've now created it. Remember, here's our secret key, comment, secret key, <laughs> all right? Okay, so we've got this defined. Now we need to initialize the database. And to do that, we just call db, or any variable at all, but we're gonna be working with a database, so I'm gonna call it db, short for database, right? And this is SQL, alchemy and we want to pass in app which is this thing right here right so make sure that we spell this right sql alchemy i always misspell alchemy i don't know why so okay that looks right capital c q l and a okay so now let's create a model whenever you're working with databases you need to define the model what, what do we want to save to the database so let's 
create one and, and we do that by creating a class and I'm gonna call this users and we wanna inherit db.model, okay? Now here we just define the things we want. We want an ID, we wanna be able to keep track of each person, each user by giving them a unique ID, user number four, user number 87, right? So in the future, if we wanna delete somebody, we don't delete Bob Smith, we delete number 87. Because there could be a lot of Bob Smiths, there's only one 87, so we need to create an ID. I also wanna keep track of name, I also wanna keep track of email, and let's also go date added, right? So now we just need to define all of these things, and we do that by calling db.column, right? So we can sort of do this for each of these. Right, and inside of here, we sort of define what this is gonna be. Well, our ID is gonna be a number, so that's a db.integer. That's the data type that we're talking about, right? There are several different data types, depending on the database you're using. Uh, we're using SQLite, so I'm gonna call db integer. Now, we also wanna set the primary underscore key to true. A primary key means basically an ID, right? This has to be unique. A primary key is always unique. Primary key will be added sort of automatically by setting primary key to true. So we don't have to assign a number to each person that signs up through our database. It'll get assigned automatically using primary key. So, okay. So now our name, what do we want this to be? This is gonna be a db.string. It's gonna be like a string of characters and we can designate how many characters we want. And I'm just gonna say 200, which I think is the max. I, don't, I can't imagine a person having a name longer than 50 characters or so, but we'll just put 200 for fun. Now we also wanna say nullable equals false. And nullable means blank, right? Null is nothing, blank. So we don't want this to be blank. So we say nullable equals false. So they have to enter their name if they're filling out the form, right? So, okay, that looks good. And let's just go ahead and grab this stuff and paste it in there as well. Email address is gonna be like, I don't know, 120 characters. We could put probably put this at 100 characters as well. I'll just leave it at 200 for fun. Okay, so nullable equals false. Now we also want to set the email address to unique. So let's go unique equals true. Why? We don't want two people with the same email address signing up, right? Only one person per email address can sign up. So we'll put unique equals true. So if we come back here, for instance, and you can see I've got john at codemy.com. If I try to add another user with john at codemy.com, it won't let me do that because we've set unique to true. Okay, finally, the date added, we want this to be a db.datetime. And let's set a default. We don't wanna have to designate the date every time somebody fills out the form. We, wanna, we want the database to do that for us. So we could set a default on here, which will take care of that for us. And we'll set that to date time dot utc now which is just a date just a time utc is a type of time sort of like a time zone you i think it's uniform time zone so i don't know whatever utc now uh, will put the current date whenever they fill out the form so okay our model has been created now we need to do one more thing we need to come down here and let's uh create a string to sort of designate something here we can go def underscore, underscore, R-E-P-R, underscore, underscore, and we want to pass in self. And if you work with Django, with classes, if you want to sort of illustrate the thing that was just put on the screen, you have to create a little string. We're sort of doing the same thing here. We want to return, and then in here, let's go name, and then percentage R, oops, one percentage. And then outside of here, let's go self.name. So this will just put name on the screen if we wanna return this thing, which we probably won't, but this is just sort of what you do when you create these models. So, all right, that looks good. So we've got this thing, but we need to sort of turn it on. We need to actually create the model. We need to sort of create the database and set this all up from our terminal. So we can come over here and run a Python shell. And let me clear the screen here. Oh, break out of our server, clear the screen. So with any other terminal, you would just type Python to get the interactive shell. We're using the git bash terminal, so we need to type win pty and then Python. And you see we get the Python interactive shell. From here, we can create our database. So let's go from hello import db. So why hello? 
Well, if we head back over here, we call this file hello.py. That's the name of our app, right? So from hello, we need to import this database guy. So, okay, back over here, hit enter. Okay, that looks good. Now we need to actually create the database. So let's go db.create underscore all, and this is a function. Okay, and that looks good. So now we can exit out of here and let's go flask run just to keep this running as always. And we can make sure this was created by looking over here and you see it's not showing up here, but if we go to file open, we see there's this users.db file that's been created, right? Okay, so now we need a form that we can fill out to add stuff to this database. So let's come down here and grab this form that we created a couple of videos ago and paste it in here. And instead of name or form, let's call this user form. And we want a name. We also want email. So let me just sort of grab this and, oh, actually, instead of what's your name, let's just type in name here. And we also want email. And right here, let's go email. We want the validator, so we'll put that in there. Okay, we could probably use an email validator here, but for now, we'll just leave this as data required. And we want a submit button, so submit field. Oh yeah, that looks good. So now we've got our form, we've got our model. Now we need a route and a function. So let's go app dot route and let's put this at let's say user slash add right and we want to set the methods to equal get and post like we learned how to do a couple of videos ago because we're going to be you know posting or getting this page so let's define add underscore user and for now let's just return a thing. We don't want to pass anything just yet. And let's point this to add underscore user dot HTML. Okay, so we don't have an add underscore user dot HTML page. So let's go ahead and create one real quick. So let's head over here to our templates and right click new file. Let's go file save as and save this as add underscore user dot HTML. And let's head over to our like maybe what? index page or name page, any one of these, grab all of this stuff and let's just paste this in. And let's see, block content, we'll leave this in case we want this. Uh, da, 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 da. We'll leave this for now because we're gonna do some logic. But we don't want this JavaScript and we don't want this stuff and we don't want this image. And for here, let's put a uh, user list for now. And we are gonna want a, a form, so we'll leave that. And we want probably a couple of these. So form, this one wants to be email, and then form email. Okay, that's probably fine for now. Okay, so that looks good. Let's go ahead and save this. We'll tinker with this in just a second. Now let's head over to our nav bar and create a link for this. So I'm just gonna come down here and copy one of these. And instead of name, let's put this as add user. And instead of URL for name, this is gonna be URL for add underscore user. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run and reload just to see what's going on here. Uh oh, we've got a routing error. And head back over to our index page and ah, we've moved our route here. So let's copy this and bring it back down there. Okay, so let's save this, let's head back over here, hit reload. Okay, so we've got our main page, we can go to add user, and form is undefined. Okay, we've not passed form yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So you see in our add user page, we've got this form, form.hidden, form.whatever, but back on our hello.py file, in our add user, we haven't created a form yet. So we could do that real quick. So let's go form equals user form. Right, because up here, that's what we called this class for our form that we created earlier, right? And then let's see where we go. Inside of here, we could just pass in form equals form. All right, so save this, head back over here, hit reload, this should work now. Okay, and you see, we've got this nice user list and email address. Now this doesn't actually do anything yet, right? 
but at least it's up there and we can toggle around and that's cool. So, okay, now how do we make this actually do something? Well, come back over to our add user form. And if we look at our add user page, we've got this logic for name. So let's, let's just use that from a previous video. So let's set name equals to none for now. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But for now, we need to do some logic to validate our form just like earlier. So we can come down here to a last video where we did all of this stuff. We're just going to do the same thing, right? So we could copy it and paste it or I'll just type it real quick because it's not a lot. We can go if form dot validate underscore on underscore submit. All right, so if it's validated, what do we want to do? If the form has been submitted and is valid, we need to check to make sure that there aren't any other users in the database that have the same email. Remember, we want a unique email. So we can create a variable called user. Now let's query the database. And to do that, we go users dot query dot filter underscore by, and then we can set email to equal form dot email dot data. So that is this field right here. When they fill out the field, hit the button, then that becomes form.email.data. And we talked about this in the last video when we talked about forms and what the forms. And so then here we want to go dot first. So what we're saying here is query the database, grab all of the users that have the email address of whatever they just typed in to the form and return the first one. Now there, there shouldn't be any, right? Because it's unique. So this shouldn't return anything, right? It should return none because there shouldn't be one because this is going to be unique. If it returns something, then we want to stop. But if it doesn't return anything, we can run an if statement. So we could say if user is none, right? If there isn't one yet, then let's add it to the database, right? So if we try and submit the form with john at codemy.com, this will look it up and say, are there any users with john at codemy.com as their email address? If there aren't, let's add this new guy. If there is, that means it already exists and we're not going to add the new guy to the database. So how do we add the new guy to the database if there isn't one? Well, if user is none, we just call user and we set that equal to users. And now we just pass in the stuff from the form. So we go name equals form dot name dot data and email equals form dot email dot data. Right? Those are the two things we want to add to the database. Okay, so now we go db dot session dot add and we want to add this user, which we've just defined right here. Right? Now we need to commit that. So we go db dot session dot commit. And that's pretty much it. So now we can set name to equal form dot name dot data. Because up here we've got this name guy we're going to pass back to the page to do some logic with. Right? Now we also need to clear the form. So let's go form dot name dot data equals nothing and form dot email dot data equals nothing. And let's create a little flash message to put up on the screen and let's say uh, user added successfully. I don't know, whatever. Okay, so now down here, we want to return form, we also want to return name equals name. Okay, so that will add something to the database. Now we want to actually show what's in the database on the screen. So I'm going to create a variable called r underscore users. And that's going to be r underscore users. Now up here, we need to define that. So let's go r underscore users equals users, name of our table, right, dot query. Let's look it up and let's order underscore by users dot date underscore added. So this will return everything in the database, right? And we're just going to pass all that into the page as our users. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this. Now let's head over to our page and down here underneath the form, perhaps let's put a couple of line breaks and let's create a for loop. So let's go for our underscore user in our users, right? And I always want to end four right away. So we don't forget. What do we want to do? 
Well, let's just put our underscore user dot name, space this out. And maybe we also want to put our user dot email. And maybe here, we want to put our user dot ID. Maybe a period after that, I don't know. Okay, so that looks good. And let's just put this on a separate line. So line break. So okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it and see how this looks. Right now, there's nothing listed under here. So let's go John Elder. Let's go John at codemy.com. We click Submit, added user addict successfully. Well, hold John Elder, we can change that in a minute. That's a throwback from the last video. Now, when we come back here to add user, we see John Elder is listed down here. We can say Bob Elder, and we see Bob at elder.com. Submit here. Now we can put the database on this screen too if we wanted to. Go back here, and now Bob Elder is listed. So to do that, we would just come back over here and let's just sort of grab all of this. And we can come up here to this uh, this other if statement here. So if name, instead of saying hello name, let's just say uh, user added. And then below here, let's paste that stuff in. Okay, so let's save this, head back over here. Now let's add uh, Tina Smith, Tina at smith.com. User added successfully, and we see Tina Smith added right there. Click that, come back here, and she's there. And it's just that easy. Now I was gonna go through here and style this stuff with Bootstrap, but man, this video is getting a little bit long. Ah, it's Flash Friday, let's do it anyway. All right, so let's go to getbootstrap.com, click on the docs, come down here to maybe utilities, and let's go borders. No, let's go shadows. Let's grab a shadow here. So here is regular shadow. So let's grab regular shadow. So we can just copy this, head back over here, and our user list form, let's wrap all of this in that div that we just copied. So come down here to the form and close it. Save that, come back over here, hit reload. That does not look good at all. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there we go, that should work. Now save this and hit reload. Okay, so this whole thing is now in a little boxy shadow thing, awesome. We can add a table here just as easy. So let's come down here to all of this stuff and above our for loop, let's create a table, and then we want to close our table. And with Bootstrap, we can add things to tables. Let's see, where's the tables at? Content, yeah, it's under content, click on tables. And you can scroll down here and see all the things that we can have. Let's see, hoverable rows, I want that. So we can add table hoverable rows. And inside of here, we just give this a class of, say table hoverable. And we have to start out by giving it a class of table and then table hoverable. What else do we want? Let's see. Borders. I probably want a border, so I'll put, I'll grab this guy. Space and paste. What else? Uh, striped rows. I kind of like that. There it is. Table striped. Save this. Or copy this, paste that in. All right, that's probably good for now. Okay, so that's the definition of the table. Now we need to, inside of here, create a table row. And instead of this BR, let's end our table row. And for each of these, we need a TD and then a closing TD. And we just have one column. So, all right, save this. Now we head back over here and hit reload. We get this nice little table. All right, that's looking good. And if we want, we can do the same thing. So I'm just going to copy all of this and bring it up here to this. We paste that in there. So now whenever we fill this out, so Mary Elder, Mary at elder.com, we click submit, boom, it looks good there too. All right. We're moving right along. Maybe we don't need quite so many line breaks there. Okay, so that's how you set up a database with SQLite and SQL Alchemy and Flask. 
Uh, you know, probably in the next video, we'll dive into using MySQL and Postgres. I'll show you how to set those up instead of SQLite. Because SQLite is great for development purposes, but it's not an industry sort of standard database that you want to use for production. You want to use MySQL or Postgres SQL or something else like that for when we actually make this website live online. But for testing purposes and just to learn how to use SQL Alchemy, SQLite works great. And this thing is coming right along. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.